Hey, what's up, YouTube fam? Brandon Weaver here, yet again, once again, here again. All right, so I got an email. This is a fantastic email. I actually was laughing at some of this craziness that these collectors are doing, just silly stuff. And um, my battery died, so I have to do the video for you guys again because I don't know, I don't know, I didn't finish it. So I want to make sure I get a good, clean take. So you better, hey, it's your fault, cameraman. You're supposed to get my, my battery straight. Oh, that's right, I'm the cameraman. Okay, no, no, it's my fault. Okay, great. Cool. So, got a nice email here from Roberto. And um, Roberto says, Hello, Brent. I'm sending you this email because of a few things. The first thing is that I received the above letter and Bill, okay, Bill, and you put it in uh, quotes like that because this is not a bill. It's this weird old statement, okay? In the mail, in response to my letter, I sent that. I sent a collection validation letter, which you can get at 609creditpair.com in our Beyond Committed package, all right? However, this bill is over four years old, okay? And I looked at this statement here, and it is from 2013, which is just crazy that they would send something or dig something out like this. It's unbelievable. I'm looking, I'm trying to find the exact date. July 16th, 2013. Good God, to date it and say, and not only that, I'm looking at it and it literally is a statement of charges. It is not, it has nothing with a signature on it. It doesn't even, it has a name, but who knows if this is you? I'm sure there's plenty of Robertos around. I mean, this is just crazy. And then they gave him a letter. I'm sorry, <clears throat> I'm looking. Uh, they, they sent him a letter to say that he owes this from this collector. And so, He's asking, okay, he's asking, what should I send them back in response? Well, I'm gonna tell you what you could send them back in response. I'm gonna read this to you right now. Real quick, uh, collection validation letter. This is uh, after they send something back from, so this is like a round two collection validation letter from the uh, the collector directly. You can get this in our Beyond Committed package. I previously sent you a request for validation of the debt, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, and all I received was an itemized list of alleged charges. That's what they basically sent you here. And uh, this does not meet the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC's guidelines that constitutes proper debt validation. Right there, the FTC says it's not proper debt validation. The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act says it's not proper. And if you're disputing with the bureaus, which I'm gonna get to in a second, that's not proper validation either. So right here, black and white, and you get these letters at 609creditrepair.com. It goes on to um, goes on to quote some case law, okay, Spears versus Brennan, all right, and um, it continues to talk that about you can go to court, you can um, claim up to in win up to a thousand dollars per unverified item on your credit bureau and your credit reports that they are putting on there, that these collectors are putting on there. And sometimes you've got guys have a couple of collections with a couple of the same company. So that could be $1,000 per uh, each situation that you have, each little collection, okay? So it goes on to say, um, therefore, if you do not immediately remove this account from my credit report, you are subject to another fine of $1,000 plus punitive damages. I'm sure your legal staff will agree that non-compliance with this request could put your company in serious legal trouble with the FTC and so forth and so on. And it goes on and on. I mean, it's a two-page letter and it's fantastic. It works. It works. It works. I've seen it work. I've seen it happen. And then there's another letter that you can send directly to the credit bureaus about collection validation. And you can let them know I'm writing to dispute the account above referenced. I have disputed this account information as inaccurate with you and you have come back to me and stating that you were able to verify this debt. How is this possible? Under the laws of the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, I have contacted the collection agency myself and have been unable to get them to verify that this is indeed my debt. You have 30 days to remove it under FCRA, so forth and so on. It goes on and on. And I don't want to bore you guys by reading letters to you, okay? You can just go ahead and get them at 609creditrepair.com. So Roberto, you send them some validation letters back to them, all right? You send some dispute letters back to them bureaus and they get them jokers off. Now, you're doing great, Roberto. Thanks for reaching out to me and thank you guys for reaching out to me. Do the comments, the likes, the subscribes. It's really awesome to see our community growing here. Thank you so much. Now, he has another question. He's worked on his credit and he says, I wanted to thank you again because the system really works. When I started with your help, uh, getting my credit squared away. I was at 517. Then, after working with you, and doing it yourself, and getting some email support, it jumped to 6 
174, which is great. However, last week I noticed that my score dropped to 641. I'm not sure if this has anything to do with the fact that I recently opened a credit card up in December 2017, so just a couple of months ago. His credit score was looking good. Needed a good credit card, wants to get credit, wants to build good credit. Got a new credit card in 2017. Yes, it has something to do with that. I actually applied for a credit card in 2017 as well at the end in December. I was thinking, oh, I didn't see it in January. Post to my report, uh, maybe, maybe I don't have to worry about it. Boom, post in February, much like yours, just last week. And because it takes some time for them to report the positive. For some reason, these jokers want to do stuff and report the good stuff late and the bad stuff right away, okay? So it took forever to get on there. But once you put a new trade line on there, I've seen new trade lines uh, go up there that, uh, you know, you got that hard inquiry and then you get a new trade line on there and it might bring your score down for just a moment and then it's gonna boost it up because you're gonna have all that new available credit. And you, what you're saying is you're paying more than your minimum, minimum due every month, maybe even paying it off every month. Your credit score is gonna go back up. I've seen it happen to me. I applied for many cards to get travel, miles, bonuses, and stuff of that nature, cash back as well. And my credit score would come down a little bit and then it would go up, down a little bit, and then up, down a little bit, and up. I didn't apply for a card for maybe about a year. Finally said I needed to get a new one and boom, card score came down a little bit and I know it's gonna go back up, so don't you worry, it's gonna go back up. Now, the only way that he checks his credit is with Credit Karma. We know here and this channel you want to perhaps invest in something if you have the monetary means to do so because I'm telling you what, if you can get a more accurate picture of your credit reports and your cause credit card only gives you two credit reports, right? And two of these credit scores that are Vantage scores, they're not even really the FICO scores. But if you can invest in something that's gonna give you a better bang for your buck return, that's gonna be a better investment for you long term because you know, if you're purchasing a car, it definitely costs a little bit more <laughs> than credit monitoring, right? Or if you're gonna purchase a home, it's more than credit monitoring, so invest. I think a lot of people go try and purchase a car, or purchase a home, these big purchases or investments, and they don't have an accurate picture of what their credit score looks like. They get denied and they're like, what's going on? Or they get approved, but don't get the greatest rates because they could have added a trade line on right before they went, you know? Get that AU trade line. You get them here, email me, okay? All right, so, uh, it's getting late, guys. It's getting late, but maybe I've got one more for you. Do I have one more? Yes, Felicia, okay. Felicia writes in, she's been an avid commenter here as well on the channel, so thank you very much, and thank you for everybody comments. If you'd like to comment below, ask a question, I can shoot you back a video response, or try and answer my comments below, okay? And please give this video a thumbs up, like, all right? Give it a like if you can, all right? If this video is helping you out, you enjoy the content, like it. Felicia says, hi Brennan, here is the other part of the letter that I sent, that uh, Equifax sent to her, and I received a form from Experian as well, asking me to fill out the form, this form, in regards to removing me permanently receiving credit card offers, this pre-approval list. What should I do with Equifax because uh, they, um, what should I do about Equifax and Experian with this letter? Okay, great. So, uh, what I would say here is you and everyone else out there have been and I encourage you to opt out of the credit bureaus selling your information to third parties so they can send you pre-approved lists and uh, on a pre-approved list so you can get these pre-approved cards and you don't need this nonsense, you don't want people, I don't want people poking in on my stuff either, okay? I know it's like, give, give me up here, cameraman. That I know it is supposedly a soft inquiry, right? Because they can't do hard inquiries without permissible purpose. But I don't want people looking into my stuff, okay? Any pre-approved stuff, I don't want people selling my information around. I don't want it going out. And it can definitely be helpful in the credit repair process and potentially boost your score a little bit, okay? So you can opt out. On our letters, we have a little footnote asking for the opt out at 609creditrepair.com. It will opt you out for uh, temporarily promotional sp suspension for about five years. And then afterwards, if you don't sign that letter and fill it out and don't want to be removed permanently, you'll start getting pre-approved offers again, which is kind of cool because, you know, I've seen my business partner get some nice pre-approval offers for business credit stuff and uh, you get a little special code and I've gotten, now that I'm part of, you know, certain, have certain credit cards, they'll give me these little offers and things like that. So maybe you don't want to be done for permanently, but if you do, sign it out, fill it out, send it back. I would say, just don't, just don't send anything to the credit bureaus besides your disputes for a little while. You know what I mean? You could always go and opt out permanently. And that is something that you might want to do later down the road. So I would say just let that mellow, get your results back. You know that they got your disputes because you got that. That's always a nice, good 
thing, they see the little boop, little clue that they're running your dispute. So hang in there. I'm very excited for everyone. That's a really awesome Roberto, really awesome. You got your credit score up, you got a new credit card, unsecured credit card. If you want to be like Roberto, you want to be like these other people, these successful people. All right, other winners, other champions. You want to go to 609 creditpaircom right now. Don't hesitate right now. Purchase the product or go to the awesomelifegroup.com where we can do it for you. Guys, I really enjoy this. It's been wonderful. Thank you for all the likes, subscribes, comments, and until I see you in person, I will see you on the other side. Take care.